Okay, so um, this is the November 3rd meeting for Keto Confab, and I'm Elizabeth Hansen, your host, uh, along with my husband, Scott Hansen, uh, on the screen there. And we live in North Dakota, so we're in the central time zone. And um, so this group is based on the teachings of Dr. Annette Bosworth, and we follow what is in the Keto Continuum book and Any Way You Can book, and also her class, con, uh, Consistently Keto. I think anyone that comes to this group is probably going to have taken that class. Um, so last week we discussed our whys and we all had really great whys. And um, so that was good. And uh, Dina suggested, since we were all pros <laughs> or long timers, um, that we add up how many pounds we had lost um, together. And there were 12 people at the meeting and one person didn't want to share how much she had lost. And that's okay. And um, so the 11 people who shared had lost a total. Um, so the 11 people that were willing to share had lost a total of 887 pounds. And so that's an average of 80 pounds a person. And um, so that's pretty fantastic for our little microcosm that we had together last week. Um, so this week, what I wanted to focus on was the next part of the workbook that goes along with the Keto Continuum um, book. Now, I think, I personally think you can purchase the workbook um, all by itself and uh, get great benefit from it. It's not a necessary thing to do, um, but it's a benefit thing. And I did something this week I wanted to um, share with you all in case you were interested in doing it. I've shown you my workbook before, but now I want to show you my workbook now. This is my workbook. I sent my workbook with my husband to the university or the college that he teaches at and had them strip the spine off it because there are so many charts in this workbook that are so useful to have. And I wanted multiple copies of them. Um, so I cut it apart and then I put them in, I put all the pages into these clear pockets so that I can read them and keep them in good condition, but also so I can copy them and use the charts over and over. So the charts like this, I can just print them on my printer and um, have them. And also the other thing that this does is it lets me lay the book totally flat um, if I wanna use it that way. And we'll keep it in good condition. And this one has one of those pockets on the front and the back um, so that you can put the front and back cover pieces inside it. And um, I do this a lot with a lot of my textbooks that I get from the different trainings I go to and everything. And so this just made sense uh, to do this. And so um, tonight, I want to talk about I think most everyone here is going to be a veteran. I want to talk about how you began your keto journey because that's the next part of um, the workbook, moving on from um, where we were last week talking about our why and building a tribe. So this week I want to talk about, you know, what issues you had starting or what things you personally got to begin your keto journey. And the workbook is so good. It, you know, puts it out uh, with pictures and explains why you want stuff, uh, this stuff and how you're going to use it. Such as, Scott, can you show us the um, food guide from Dr. Boz? 
Yeah, the food guide, I'm sure all of you know that one. And it's wonderful. It's got that magnet on the back and everything. And I just saw that she now has on her website a 10 pack for $22 that you could, you know, buy and give to your family and friends that you want to encourage to do keto or to help them understand what you're doing, that you're not starving yourself to death. You actually get to eat real food and, and everything. And um, I have the maximum strength, uh, strength BHB capsules uh, because I'm sensitive to um, stevia. I can't use the liquids, you know, that she makes the drinks that she sips in the Tuesday Night Lives. So um, I will use these from time to time if I've done a little bit of cheating. <laughs> um, I don't use them terribly often because if I do, I get some heart arrhythmias, but that's my problem. It's not the product. My heart will get an arrhythmia if I don't drink enough water, or don't get enough sleep or whatever. So I'm just sensitive that way. And then Scott, can you show us uh, one of your other things you have there? Um, these are the keto strips. I'm sure all of you are familiar with them. This is an inexpensive brand we got off of Amazon. Um, because of our position in the continuum, we've gone on to using the blood ketone and glucose um, monitoring. But to start off, that's all you need is the ketone strips. And um, the other thing that I have found is I I sometimes with my pregnant clients that I work with, I will have them get a different urine strip. Uh, this is called a Uri Spec 11 way. And this actually will check for proteins in your urine and ketones and um, pH and glucose and uh, any blood in your urine and stuff. There are some like this that will also check for uric acid if you're concerned with, if you've had problems with gout in the past and you're concerned about that. So, you know, you can go on Amazon and look and see what things, you know, um, it, 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 you can get, they're more expensive than the ones Scott was showing you, but um, they can be very useful if you don't want to buy a glucose monitor, but you want to see if you're, you're putting any sugar out into your urine, that would be useful. Scott, what else you got up there? And here's what else you'll get. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got Epsom salts uh, and, and this, um, this comes in eight pound bags. Uh, is this yeah. Walmart? This is from Walmart. Yeah, that's right? the Walmart brand. Um, Dr. Boz suggests that you get at least 15 pounds of it when you're starting keto. And um, I don't know why Walmart puts it out in eight pound bags, but they do have five pound bags and one pound bags. She said, you know, you could get a 40 pound bag and you'd use it up, but I've never seen it in 40 pound bags. Um, and so whatever. And then another thing she suggests is good old milk of magnesia um, and everything. And um, she talks about uh, the need for a vitamin D3 K2 supplement and um, suggests that you get uh, some blood work done uh, for your H1C, maybe your insulin level, your, your D, your vitamin D levels and stuff. So that whole section of the workbook is a really good roadmap of how to get started on keto. One of the other things she talks about in this section in the workbook is, um, it keeps, is it on there? Somebody give me a thumb up. Um, yeah, the chronometer. And I love the chronometer uh, because it really keeps me accountable and it's so quick and easy to use. One of the things that stunned me the most when I first started how many carbs it was, 43.9 for a cup of rice. And I ate a lot of rice. So it was really shocking. And, um, and then you go to cauliflower and it's only, uh, 2.9 net carbs and stuff. And I know Dr. Boss says set it to total carbs and I forgot to do that when I brought this up tonight. Um, but 
I just love the breakdown vitamins and your minerals and your proteins and your lipids and everything. It's just excellent. And it's an excellent way to keep you accountable to what you should be doing in your diet. So when you guys tell me about how you started and got going, I want you to tell me whether you're using chronometer and, and how you found it, whether you find it easier, it's really difficult for you or what. Um, the other thing she talks about in this section of the workbook is those people who are in the 200 club. And I was more like the 400 club. <laughs> um, and that was why I really started slowing down my um, carb eating and sugar eating from November until January, when I finally really got into um, doing keto because I was eating so many carbs. And personally, I had never thought about carbs until I read Dr. Baz's book. Um, but once I read about them, I was horrified at how many I was eating a day. I mean, it was just like, uh, you know? Um, and so, um, Anyway, so that portion of the workbook really gives people a great way to know how to get started the right way and um, protect themselves from the keto flu and from uh, bathroom issues. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's great. Uh, so I gotta let somebody in. Um, anyway, so uh, that's the overview of that part of the workbook, which is the next one. We're just going to go along. Welcome, Shirley. And um, then I would like to ask somebody to share with us um, how they got started and whether they had a rocky start or problems, or if you got the things Dr. Boz suggests that we get to begin, um, and whether you didn't use them or didn't need them or you depended on them or what. So who wants to speak up? Okay, Tammy, uh, just unmute yourself there. I did keto first many, meant not many, but maybe four years ago and I lost maybe 60 or 70 pounds and it was not with Dr. Boz. I don't really know how I found it many years ago, uh, but then for some reason, and I don't really know why, because I'm getting old and I forget, um, I stopped and, and I gained um, maybe 20 or 30 of the pounds back. And then I found Dr. Boz um, last May when she had her first class. And so then I um, joined and started with her in May. And I was, I did not buy all the things. I did not buy ketone strips, but I already had a ketone blood meter because I had had one before. I did not buy pea strips. And um, I don't know what else you might have said, but I was, I do use chronometer at the beginning with um, when she started and I had been using my fitness pal. And there are some things, the main thing I did, that my fitness pal was better was that you could import recipes and you just picked a web page and it imported the recipe and then you just fixed it up where in chronometer you have to add all the items in individually and um so that was just much more inconvenient i mean my fitness pal if it had 10 ingredients it imported them and then you just kind of fixed them up and maybe picked better choices or it may have not imported exactly right you know um but it was better to start with a base than having to enter each of the items in your recipe. Anyway, but um, but I didn't mind um, having it and it was easy to use because I'd already been using one. And you know, it's nice that you can scan the barcode, you know, on your phone of the items that you're um, doing. So it makes it much nicer, you know, it's, it's fine to use. And it maybe has a learning curve to people who've never used one, but any any app that you did for food would be a learning curve if you used it. And um, so I used it and I was pretty strict from May when I started last year until, I don't know, um, maybe the rest of the year. And then I've kind of plateaued this year. I did lose 40 pounds. So I'm at the lowest I've ever been. I am, I am 10 pounds more than I weighed at 18 years old when I graduated from high school. And I'm less 
and I'm less than I weighed at 26 years old when I got married because I know how much I weighed then too when you're looking for wedding dresses and stuff. Um, so I'm uh, right in the middle there and I would like to lose my last 20 pounds because it's, and it's not so much that I want to lose the 20 pounds and it's not a number. I want to just look, I want to look different. And so if it comes at 10 pounds and I lift weights and I gain some, you know, I, the number isn't so important as losing the flab and stuff around that I have. Um, and it, so it's not really a pound number. So um, you asked about, so anyway, I've been, um, I've been, I didn't, I did buy any way you can last year and read that and I did not buy her other stuff, but I've gotten re-energized to kind of start over again. Not that I'm starting over, but to kind of be more motivated to, to lose that last 10 pounds. And so I did buy her book, um, the, the Keto Continuum and the workbook. And actually the Keto Continuum book came in the mail today and the workbook came last week. I was going to do the workbook without the book, but I just bought $20. I'll just buy them both. And um, so anyway, they just came in today. So I'm going to read those. And I started listening to the lessons over again. You know, most of them I already know, but I figured if I listen to them again, it kind of gives you a little bit of motivation. And there's probably a little something in every one of them that you may have missed or that you didn't hear the first time around because maybe it was all new and you didn't um, pick up on everything that she said and remember at all. So, um, so that's where it's at. Oh, I do have two issues that I'm still dealing with. I have a lot of sleep issues. Now I had sleep issues before I went on keto and I still have sleep issues today. And I'm doing a little test and I'm going to gather my numbers, but I'm, I think that I have sleeping issues when I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't go back to sleep in my, because my ketones are high. Now, I have not really heard that that's a reason why you don't sleep, but I'm doing a little test to look at my numbers and see if my sleeping issues follow my keto numbers. Um, and I go on and off with leg cramps. Um, sometimes they can have a lot of them. And um, like two weeks ago, I was having them every night, but now I'm not having them so much. So I don't really know, understand that. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> okay, very good. And I found out that Tammy lives in South Dakota, right? No, I'm in Mississippi. Oh, you're in Mississippi. Who said they live in South Dakota? Dina said she was in South Dakota. Yeah, I know Dina lives there, but someone sent a message on the... I said no. I was from Mississippi. Oh, she Sioux said Falls. she's from Mississippi, and I said, hi, Tammy. Oh, I live in, okay. she, had, she had introduced yeah. herself saying her, her state, so I oh. thought, well, I'll tell her what state I'm in. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, so, Tammy, when we're when we're done going around the room uh, talking about how we began and everything, I, I'd like to come back to your questions and anybody else that has questions, tell me at the end of, you know, what we're talking about tonight and then we'll we'll try and get to those questions. And um, Tammy, when you did your original keto those four years ago, did you run into keto flu? Did you have constipation problems? Did you have issues starting? I did have keto flu and I, um, and I just sucked it up and made it through it. You know, I mean, it was a week maybe or so, and I did have keto flu. Um, I hadn't re read, you know, it gets more popular every year. So maybe four years ago, there wasn't as much to read about. And maybe I, I just didn't know to be hydrated and to take the salt. Or if I did know, I didn't do it as much as I should have. So I don't, but I did have keto flu and I did um, kind of just suck it up and just manage to get through it. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember a whole lot on constipation problems. Um, I, I'm, I'm getting old, I forget things, you know. <laughs> um, I don't have it. So I don't have those problems anymore because I would take magnesium, a lot of magnesium every day for my leg cramps to kind of help them go away. And I know that helps you be more regular. So, mm -hmm. um, so I take 800, 800, whatever the numbers are, um, just about every day. And I think that keeps me regular there. Do you know what kind of magnesium you take? Is it a magnesium citrate? citrate? Yes. Okay. Although I hear magnesium glycinate is maybe a better choice. Um, but it's the citrate I hear is, is good, gets absorbed well too. So I think either one of them are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. 
um, when we get to questions and stuff. So who wants to go next telling us about how they got started and what products they've used and stuff? Okay, Patrice. Okay, it sounds like I might have been in that same class with Tammy because I, I started uh, on keto pretty much in April of 2020 with Dr. Boz's uh, first class. But prior to that, um, I actually was vegan vegetarian for like 15 years. And I had all kinds of gut issues, diverticulitis. I was always getting pains in my stomach. Um, the doctors all thought it was gallbladder related. And then they would find, I'd have all kinds of ultrasounds. They'd find that it wasn't gallbladder. Um, then I had to go to a GI doctor and he put a tube down me to see if they could find out what was wrong with me. They diagnosed me with a lazy stomach. So this whole time I'm eating vegetarian thinking I'm doing such healthy things for myself. And at, there, at one point I was eating almost like no fat. And I have neuropathy, I have peripheral neuropathy. I'm not diabetic, but I, I have that, which is probably the worst thing you can do is not to have any, any fat, good fats in your system. So anyway, the, re, the way I turned this all around was um, May of 2019, a month before I was getting married, I ended up with a GI bleed out and was rushed to the emergency room. I was in the hospital for two weeks. I had to have four blood transfusions. I had two lesions in my stomach and they somehow got ulcerated. They think it was from the Advil I had been taking for leg pain that I had had for like a year or a year and a half. And so I was a little nervous about how to eat going forward, you know, with my stomach situation. Um, but um, I, we went on to Italy on our honeymoon and I said to my husband, I'm going to eat meat there. <laughs> I am going to eat meat there because they have all these great meats and cold cuts, which I never would touch. And, um, and I seemed to do fine while I was there. And then when we got back, I had my hip replaced and my brother has cancer and he was put on a special diet of no sugar, no grains. And his wife was doing all the cooking for him. And she has very bad arthritis. And I, when I was talking to her, she said, you know, Patrice, since I've been eating this way, because I'm cooking this way for your brother, my, heart, I hardly, my heart arthritis is not even really bothering me that much. So when she told me that, because after my hip replacement, I was starting to get the joint pain again and everything. And I, I said, I'm going to try this, no sugar, no grain. So that's how I started. I mean, I started out with that. Now, I did low carb in high school. And I don't even, it wasn't called Atkins then. I think it, I don't know, it's the, maybe the drinking man's diet. I don't know, <laughs> but, but anyway, so um, I was familiar with low carb, um, but I don't know, I just never lasted on it more than a month or so. And then I guess I would just feel it was bad that I was eating all this meat or whatever. Um, so I, I started researching um, the no sugar, no grains, which led to low carb, which led to keto. And I'm like, what the heck is this keto thing? And I didn't get it at first, you know? And um, so then I saw Dr. Boz's, um, I found Dr. Boz on, I guess, one of her YouTube videos. And then I bought her book, Any Way You Can. And I loved her book. I just loved it. Cause I just related so much to when I took care of my mother when she had cancer, even though I didn't put her on keto. I wish I knew about it then. Um, and um, yes, yeah, so I took her course and I was really good about it. I mean, I did not have, I had lost some weight for my wedding. I mean, total, I had lost, not on keto though, but 40 pounds. I, well, I had lost maybe 25 pounds for my wedding. And then when I got sick and I was in the hospital, I lost some more weight. Then I gained it a little bit back, but the, what was, I was so worried about putting all this weight back on. But now that I was on keto, I lost more weight and it kept it off. And I felt like a million bucks. I just could not believe I didn't have the bloat. I was more clear-headed. I, I didn't have the joint pain. My neuropathy pain wasn't bothered. You know, it was just amazing how everything fell together. And I was like, I just can't believe all these years that I followed this vegetarian diet. I mean, I couldn't go by the meat counter at the supermarket. I used to feel so bad about all those animals and everything. I wouldn't even go by there. And, um, and now, because I just eat so much fat and protein, um, my, my husband was teasing me. He said, whose blood did you get when I was in the hospital? Because he can't believe that I'm, I'm eating this way now. But 
it's been, um, I follow, I had her chart with um, what you should eat, which I found really helpful. And I love that I could have liverwurst. I hadn't had liverwurst in probably 30 years. So I was happy that I could have that. When she mentioned spam, I thought, eh, I did have that growing up, but I don't think I'm going to go there. Um, so I, I loved it. And I was feeling, I was basically doing it for metabolic health. I did engage a low carb doctor because I, I knew my doctor would not approve of this. And I did engage a low carb doctor, Dr. Tro Kalajian. Um, he's here by me and I know he does things remotely too. Um, so he is pretty much a weight management. He was a doctor at Greenwich Hospital in Connecticut here. I'm in New York. Um, so um, at least he does a little extensive blood work on me and I could not believe all my numbers. They were just my triglycerides were low, my HDL was high, you know, my, um, I was 4.9, was that A1C? I think, you know, the inflammation markers. It was just incredible that this kind of eating just improved my, I mean, when I was eating vegetarian, my triglycerides were like 300. It was just crazy how bad my triglycerides were. Um, so, um, but I have found over the last year, I stopped using chronometer, which I need to go back to. And I keep saying that every day and I haven't been faithful to it yet. I start out in the morning and then it falls off the wayside. But I have found that, that as much as I don't go terribly off the program, whatever little carb creep is happening, I have been on like 15 pounds. And um, that's why, and I, I thought, and I just like Tammy, I just went back and started listening to the course again. And um, I did buy her newer, the new book that she has out, but I, I started reading through it and I also have it an audio version, but then I sort of just fell off my radar. So I wanna go back and listen to that. Um, I wanna go back and listen to her uh, class and, um, yeah, because I do want to get this 15 pounds off. Um, I've been really stuck here. And I think I'm following the program correctly. So I'm obviously doing something wrong. And the one thing I'm doing differently is I'm not tracking. So I think we don't realize how one carb here, two carbs there pile up. And because I am finding I am very sensitive to if I eat too many veggies or if I eat too much artificial sugar, you know, stevia or something that. I plateau. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I was starting to dabble a little bit more in carnivore, but I don't know. I like my salads and my green vegetables every once in a while. So uh, anyway, but I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm so happy eating this way and it's very hard because um, a lot of people think I'm crazy, but, and I don't find it hard if I go out to eat. Um, it's more if I go over to someone's house for dinner or something like that. I try to let them know what I'm eating, but um, mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Wow, Patrice, you have quite the story. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. And I have to say that the first 24 years of my life, I was raised vegetarian and ate vegetarian. And mm -hmm. it was very carb intense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I can't and time and time consuming. I think back <laughs> to all the I was making, you know, regatta cheese out of yogurt and soy and I mean, all the juicing, I mean, all the time I spent in the kitchen eating that way. Yeah. Crazy. And I was always overweight, always inflamed, always had problems yeah. and everything. And, um, you know, it's just taken me this long to figure out what actually works for my body. So, but thank you for sharing, Patrice. That was great. So who wants to go next? You know, I, I'd just like to mention, Patrice, that uh, uh, I'm real glad that for your story as well, because yesterday um, I heard that my, my brother is uh, starting to have uh, arthritis problems. And, and I started wondering, uh, you know, I, I wonder if um, keto would help with that, because, you know, arthritis, uh, I mean, there's, there's, you know, numerous different types of arthritis, so, you know, and, but I mean, a lot of a lot of arthritis is really closely associated with inflammation. Right. And, you know, the big thing that's happening with carbs is inflammation, all, you know, all sorts of inflammation all throughout the body. Yes. And so I'll have to suggest that he uh, eats fewer carbs or something. 
I mean, I have to tell you, I broke down this past weekend, which I have never done this. And I ate the bun on a hamburger and, oh. and I even ate the French fries. This is where I was starting to head. And I normally order a salad and normally tell them, don't put it on a bun. Or if they do even put it on a bun, I'll take the bun off. I don't even think yeah. for some reason, I don't know if I was overtired or what it was. I ate all that. And then I even had a Halloween candy bar. And I can't tell you that night, I could feel the, I could feel the pain just that soon and that quickly. And it just reminded me and I couldn't believe the pain. And I was like, God, I forgot why I started eating this way. It, 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 it's unbelievable. I, I find it for me, I'm very sensitive to that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, arthritis runs in my family. Uh, arthritis and, and bursitis. Uh, my father had bursitis really bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah. Um, I actually have basal joint arthritis in my thumb here. You know, when really? you try to open jars and doorknobs and, um, and I've been fighting it for two years and I'm in January, I'm going to go in and have the surgery and it is my right hand and I'm dreading it. I'm like, you know, cause it's a, it is a long recovery, right? But the surgery itself is under an hour, but it is a long recovery. And I'm like, and the doctor's like, it doesn't go away if you don't use your hands. <laughs> it's there for good. So just go have the surgery. And I'm like, <laughs> have you ever gotten um, injections in the joint? Um, yeah, I got one last year and it, it, it took over a month to kick in, but then it was working. And I actually went back to my doctor a month ago to get another injection. I figured it's a year later. Let me do that. Um, he had also put me in therapy last spring, which helped. And yep. he made a splint for me, which helped. But when I went to get back, when, when I went to see him for the, the next injection, um, he took an x-ray and he said, this has gotten so bad. And he said, uh, and so he said, I think you need to start thinking about surgery. I work part time. Um, so I said, well, it would have to be January or next September. And I was going to opt for next September. And he said, just do it in January and get it over with. So because I'm going to have the surgeries within the next few months, they don't recommend an injection because it can cause yeah. infection. Right. Yep. Uh -huh. yep. Yeah, there's but, a risk. Yeah. So yeah. anyway. Hopefully, uh, right. I, I know keto did not help this. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. But you know, there, there are. Um, well, I mean, arthritis is a is a type of rheumatoid uh, condition, and there are over three hundred different rheumatoid conditions and things, and they're caused by a number of different things. And you know, but I, I, I yeah, I'm pretty sure that keto would help quite a few of these conditions. Yeah, but anyway, you well, know, I have so to we, tell you this. Knowing I'm going in for knowing I'm going in for surgery in January, I have to say it's making me really focused on eating really good now and doing the right yeah. thing, so that I'm in the best health when I go in for right. that surgery. You know, make sure your vitamin D is in a good place, Patrice, before you okay. go to surgery, because okay. you know this it surgery, even though we're doing it under you know. Um, clinical conditions and everything it's still a trauma to the body and it's it's a big stressor and it can you know really stress the body so going in with a really good vitamin d level and um healthy eating for the months before you go in will really help your recovery okay great thank you yeah. So who wants to talk about their getting on keto? Okay, Patricia is up next. Oop, Patricia's iPhone is not talking to us. Well, I could go next, I suppose. Okay. Um, yeah, so I went on, I started keto uh, fairly gradually and, and I didn't really have keto flu or anything. Uh, um, I, when I first got onto keto, I, um, I felt hungry often though, it, because you're, you're, you're eating food that's very, uh, nutrient dense. And so you're eating less volume of food. And so, you know, the, there's less in, in your stomach. And so you, you know, you, you still have that, you know, that feeling of hunger. And, and so, you know, but, um, but I got through that, though, uh, uh, and um, I, I did have constipation, and and so what I did is I, I decreased the amount of cheese I was eating and and increased my magnesium, uh, and and 
you know, that's that's pretty much solved it. Um, and I didn't really have any, not really any other issues, you know, other than, you know, missing certain types of food, you know, uh, um, uh, maybe sometimes missing eating sweet things, you know, for example. Um, but one thing that I encountered, and and this is probably kind of uh, uh, unusual, but, um, you know, in order to uh, check your blood level for glucose and ketone, you know, you, you've got to, uh, um, you've got to use the little lancet thing and, and poke your finger. And, and I, I, I don't know, I'm very sensitive, my skin is very sensitive to things like that. And, and I'd never been able to actually lancet my finger and, and get a drop of blood. Um, and so it, it took a while to actually get you know, be able to come to the point where I, I can uh, get that that thing to uh, to take a uh, to get the lancet to actually you know take a uh, get a drop of blood out of my finger, um, and, and I you know and I still have the the pain with it as well, even though it's you know it's a very small lancet. Well, the other thing though is is with with my fingers, I don't really get a lot of blood out of my finger. I mean, I often have to poke the finger twice actually to get enough blood to even have enough of a, a, a blood sample to to get the glucose the, the meter to work but i did find though that um if you if you poke it into the the lobe of your ear number one you don't feel any pain which to me was great <laughs> and and for for me anyway i i get more blood out of my lobe than i do out of my finger um you know maybe that's that's just me uh my daughter hannah did it at least once or twice, and I forget whether she got more blood or less blood out of her lobe. But but she did she did find that you know there's you know you don't have uh, any pain in the earlobe anyway. Um, so uh, uh, those are the major things that I faced anyway when when starting keto. Yeah, um, the the whole not wanting to poke himself to get blood was quite hilarious, actually, because he and teaches. Her daughter Hannah's the same way. Oh, she's worse than him. <laughs> um, and see, he teaches biology, and one of the labs he does with his students is getting them to use a lancet to poke themselves to test for their blood types. And he has but no problem actually, having them do it. But yeah, yeah actually, in, in, in recent years, they, they've come out with uh, um, fake blood. <laughs> and so oh. you can you can actually use fake blood rather than because, you know, with um, uh, with the whole AIDS thing and I think other things, you know, um, some institutions have gotten really um, really over uh, protective and, and over and and the, and they get you know really nervous about uh, having students getting their own blood products uh, in, in the lab and so a lot of uh, so there are companies that will actually supply uh, fake blood uh, for those labs and that's and that's kind of convenient as well because they could they they can supply you fake blood of, of all four blood types all four of the ABO blood types but anyway <laughs> don't want to get too far off on a tangent. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, Scott. Um, Patricia, are you ready to share? It hasn't unmuted you yet. Oh, there you okay. go. Okay. My problem is uh, sometimes I use a, a Windows laptop, sometimes I use an iPad, sometimes I use the iPhone, and the stupid buttons are in different places and all the different things. So I get mixed up. So anyway, um, hi, I'm Patricia. I'm from North Carolina. And um, I had a, an interesting pathway to Dr. Boz, too. I I prayed one night to God, please show me. I had been to the doctor and he said, you know, Patricia, I'm going to give you three more months. And he said, if we don't start losing some weight here, he says, we really have to start talking about bariatric surgery. He said, this can't go on like this. So I prayed. I said, God, please show me 
I don't really know what to do. And so I came upon this woman named Lynn Janae Recitas, and she has a, a diet, I don't know if anyone knows about, but it's called the plan. And basically it's an elimination diet and you just remove everything. And then you start back with very, very slowly with chicken and um, flax seeds. And, and basically you only try one thing every day. And if you do not lose 0.4 pounds by the next day, then you know you were reactive to that food. So don't do that anymore. So pick another thing the next day. And so basically um, it, it sort of worked, but the most important thing I learned from her is that you need to get away from processed foods. And I think that's the, the key thing with all the diets. Get away from processed foods and get away from seed oils and try to keep the carbs under 20 per day. If you do, if you do those three things, you basically have this, this whole problem solved. Well, then I did find out about Dr. Boz and I've read the books and um, I had the same problem as Scott. I did not want to prick my finger because I, um, I faint whenever I see blood. One time I was washing dishes and I broke a glass and I just fainted right there. <laughs> they had to pick me up off the floor. I can't stand, you know, I've had two children too, so who knows? But anyway, I finally did learn how to use the Lancet and everything. So um, my problem now is that um, I don't like tracking. I did do the chronometer and I did, you know, keep track of all the um, carbs and everything. And um, I just got real lazy in keeping track. And so Recently, I have, since uh, um, Elizabeth, you've opened up this group and there's other groups opened up, I've been doing a lot more um, support groups than I ever did before. And I've been learning that most of these people at, K at um, Dr. Boz's uh, uh, graduates are actually fasting almost every week, at least for 24 hours. And I, I haven't, I think I fasted one time in the last two years. I just, um, that's another thing. Like, I don't like the idea of things getting out of control. And I was afraid that, you know, after 24 hours or 36 hours, I would just, you know, wouldn't be able to sleep or I, things would get out of control. But anyway, so that's my problem. I've sort of let things slip by. I'm not, I'm doing really well. I. I eat the same breakfast every day. I eat the same lunch every day. I have a ribeye every day for lunch. And for breakfast, I have a, a sausage dip that I make with a, Rotel, a can of Rotel uh, tomatoes. Um, but I have also started a very bad habit of getting the McDonald's iced coffee without any sugar and I put stevia in it. And it's a very bad habit because I know that the cream that McDonald's uses is not pure cream. I think it's half and half. Uh, I think that's allowed. They can call it cream even though it's not true cream. So I need to stop that. I need to get back on track with keeping, you know, with the chronometer and, um, Actually, I haven't been pricking my finger either. I just keep eating the same thing every day and, and just hope that the thing, uh, you know, the program will work. But I'm realizing now that most of the people that are Dr. Ba's uh, students, they really are fasting at least 24 hours a week. And uh, some of them are doing 72 hours quite often. I, 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 I'm realizing now I need to start doing that. Even though, of course, Dr. Boz has been demonstrating, mm -hmm. you know, how she does it for the last three years. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's my situation. 
Um, Patricia, were you able to catch Dr. Boz's live last night? Not live, but I did watch it today. Okay, because I find Tammy's story very interesting in how she really had to break it down herself and go slower and slower. And doing the fasting is what is getting her to, you know, into the healing of her gut and yeah. and everything. She's an amazing person. Amazing. Yeah, and um, this Lynn Renee Recidus, uh that you talked mm -hmm. about, that sounds like a very interesting um, program. I'm going to look it up later. Um, not because I want to try it for myself, but, you know, I like to, I like to learn about other stuff. And I mean, it does have um, something very interesting that if you gain weight with a food and that's the only thing you ate, maybe you're sensitive to it. And I work with a lot of people with sensitivities. And um, so that's mm -hmm. interesting to me. Um, about your issue, have you plugged in your sausage and sauce mm -hmm. and, um, and um, into chronometer or whatever uh, and made sure it's okay on the carbs and stuff? I did. It's, I, I haven't really done it for a while, but uh, it's probably still there as one of my recipes in the chronometer, but uh, okay. it was low. It was very low carb. Okay. And then your steak that you have. Um, the ribeye. The ribeye. Yeah. Uh, the ribeye steak. Um, what I heard someone else with the Boz group say is that if she was getting too much protein in a 24 hour period, she would stall. She would not lose anything. She wouldn't, after a while, she'd start to put on two tenths of a pound or three tenths of a pound, mm. but she would stall. So you might look at your protein total for the day. Um, yeah you know, that might be it. But the fasting thing, um, you know, in, as you heard in the live from yesterday, challenging our bodies um, helps us heal. And it helps take care of those deep fat, well, not fat, but glycogen storage and, and everything. And maybe you need to do some healing like that. I wouldn't go to uh, a 72 hour fast. I try. Are you a 16 8 person right now? Yeah, the truth is, I'm a 16 8 and have been for over a year. Okay. But as I say, I've been slipping in some of this um, cream from the coffee. So yeah. I need to get the number, I need to get back and to be sure that I'm in ketosis before I start doing any fasting. I know yeah. that much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Patricia. Very interesting. Okay. Um, who else would like to share? Okay, Shirley. Okay, I'll share. <laughs> uh, I can answer a couple of y'all's questions about um, arthritis. If or you want me to tell you my story? <laughs> well, I I would love to hear how you got into keto and um, how that was for you. Did you run into any problems? Did you use any of the products Dr. Boz suggests and, and everything? And then you can tell us about your arthritis because I'm sure there are people who would like to hear about it. Originally, uh, I started January 13th in uh, 1918, 1918, 2018. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my daughter that lives in Australia told me about keto. She said, Mother, I really think you should try this. I think it would help because I found out last year. She said, you know, Mother, you were always on a diet when I was growing up. Well, I got to thinking about it. Yes, I have been and I'm still big. But anyway, so uh, I did all this research and uh, the first person that I saw a video of was Casey Durango who follows Dr. Uh, Eric Westman. And I thought, oh, she's, she's not real young. I might can do this. This is great. She look, it's worked for her. So uh, I don't, I guess I got the list, his list. I don't even remember. But anyway, Dr. Um, 
Westman and Dr. Ali had a conference in Houston. That's 500 miles from me. And my sister called me. She said, let's go. And so we went to Houston and listen, it was a low carb um, uh, cruise. They were going to go on the next day. So um, the, the doctor from Sweden was there. I didn't know who he was. I walked out of my hotel room, y'all, and I was smacked. I, almost, I could have kissed Dr. Barry, but I didn't know him. I thought, well, who are you? <laughs> but I found out later. But anyway, <laughs> and if I had seen Nisha, you know, but she was so, she's so short, I guess I just didn't see her. She was behind him. But anyway, I learned a whole lot. And uh, so let's see. I, I I was losing weight. I'm a very, very slow loser, but that's okay. It adds up. So let's see. That was in May. So a, a year later. No, no. Okay. And then I went to Australia in August and I had lost, I think, 30 or 35 pounds between J January and August. And my daughter, we were going to, you know, do keto while I was there. I was there six uh, weeks. And anyway, we did our first 24-hour fast, and we just thought we were just going to die. <laughs> and then we did a, we tried, we were going to go for 48, but we just couldn't make it. <laughs> we didn't know, you know. Anyway, so I come back, and I went for another, I went for another year. Is that right? Okay. No, I went from August to April when Dr. Boz had her class. But anyway, I didn't lose any weight. So when I, I, I found out about Dr. Boz. I took her course. And I'm, I've done everything she said. And I just finished a 72-hour fast today. Now, I had, uh, I will say in January, of 2019 I had a rheumatologist appointment like uh, th three weeks in to this diet and I had asked the doctor would my eating make any difference on my arthritis oh no mm -mm, no well anyway I felt great and I told him and I told him what I was doing and I said I feel great with my new way of eating it helped so much I have been in pain on my back most of my life, and um, I, I just felt great. Oh, I know what I, I know what it was. Well, anyway, so I, I took the course. I couldn't get the pea strips to turn pink. I did. I don't know what. It, it's just me. What am I gonna do? Well, I ended up getting the meters. And I tried to get my internal medicine doctor to run the test, the blood work. She would not do it. She wouldn't even run a complete panel on my thyroid. And so I got really disgusted. And y'all heard me say this before. She, I said, fine. I, I'll, and every time she'd look at my, lit, you know, my thumb to see what I was, in, oh, that's just too much fat. That's just too, that's just too many. Well, that's not enough calories. So, uh. My blood pressure was a little high at that time. I think it was 135, 143 over 80. I don't know. But anyway, so I said, fine, I'll, I'll do your diet. And I did the sad diet, and that's when I gained 50 pounds. And just from August, the end of August to March. No, that's not true. From March to August. See, I have these appointments in the same time each year. Anyway, I couldn't walk. My legs were swollen. I felt terrible. I walked in there, and I said, I don't know what's wrong. And she said, well, you can start wearing support hose. And I said, you know, I, I, I did change my diet for you, <laughs> and I have been eating bread. That's it. It's the salt. So that's when I told the nurse. I'm going to eat as much salt as I want to, and as much fat, and as much meat, because I felt good. So I went back and read, and, and went through the course again, you know, to, to get my mind fresh. And I had, of course, I had not absorbed nearly as, every time I, I, I read something in that course, well, why didn't I get that? I guess you just can't absorb it all. So I have gone step by step 
just what she has told me to, has told me to do and i started in august of last year and i got dr cyrus to run my blood work and he has he's run it twice and the numbers are unbelievable how good they are and um my arthritis i, I haven't like i said I, I, well i went in let's see where did i go in I think, oh, in September, and I, um, no, it was July, and I said, I told the PA, I said, I feel great, I'm wonderful, oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to exercise now, I'm doing an auto aerobics, and she said, you know, that is so good to hear, I hear so many people, they just come in and complain and everything, it's good to see that it's working, and I told her I was on keto, and I love it, it's, it's amazing, though, what you tell people that, they immediately get offended. But yes, your brother-in-law can be helped. It's wonderful for, for, for arthritis. It's just wonderful. Now, my fast, I ended up doing 11, 72 hour fast. And I had to have eye surgery. Uh, I had it in June. I had a hole in my retina. And I, they, you know, it was a possibility that I would lose my eyesight. And he had been watching this little split for four years. And I was very upset about it because, you know, the th idea of me losing my sight. Well, I had the surgery and the doctors was so pleased. And he said, the reason I did so well was because I was so healthy. And he, I think he was really shocked because I am overweight. And I've lost 65 pounds, and I hadn't lost any more since July. And But I fasted up to the day before surgery. And then I didn't fast after that. You know, I wanted to heal. I think I was doing uh, two meals a day, though. And uh, I don't know why. But I started back on the 72-hour fast last week. And... Uh, and this is my second one. Oh, I'm starting over. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. <laughs> start, but anyway, I'm going to start doing my 72 hour fast and I am not going to weigh myself because I find it very, I, it's just me, but I, I have to have patience and just see what happens. But it's really, you're going to be surprised. And the first one, I, the first, 72 hour fast I did y'all are not going to believe how you feel the second one's even better it is Dr. Boss was absolutely right I mean oh. <laughs> and you know you don't want to stop so anyway try it it's really not that hard hey uh I'll I'll support you while you're doing it do you want to you know yeah, I mean, we could, you know, the wind, everybody's ready to do a 72 somewhere down the road, we could try doing a 72 together. And, um, you know, well, contact a bit if you're going to start with the 30, 36 and the 48. Yeah. yeah. Listen, I'll sit there and hold your hand if you're going to with the 48. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. What I did, I well, well, I well, see. When I first started the long one, the, I got very, very busy. You know, I cleaned out a lot of drawers, <laughs> started cleaning out the garage, <laughs> and that helps to stay mm -hmm. busy. Yeah, Dr. Well, Boz has mentioned in a lot of her videos, and even in the book, that. Uh, it helps her to be very busy. That's why she does her fast usually from Sunday to Tuesdays um, and because Mondays are always a very busy day at the office and, you know, getting everything going. And so, you know, um, and, you know, it's a process. You can't decide tonight to, I'm going to do a 72 hour fast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. No, you have yeah. to work your way up to it. And um, so very good, Shirley. Now, we're a little after eight. Um, Jenny, Wilma, and if you've come back, Barbara, um, do any of you feel a burden to share or does anyone have a question? I know Tammy had a question. 
Um, oh, Jenny wants to share. Okay, Jenny's not able to have video tonight, um, but we'll listen to Jenny. The reason I have no video, I had a procedure on my face for precancers, and I'm just not ready for prime time. <laughs> it's like I have a bad sunburn. I guess it was sort of a kind of a chemical peel, but boy, it still hurts. Anyhow, my story is not anything like anybody else's. It's very simple, but I just wanted to say that I did finish my first 72-hour fast today, and the first 24 hours, tw between 24 and 26, were the worst. After that, I was pretty, pretty much okay, except at the times that I normally eat, I said, I'm not really hungry, but my head hunger was there. But I didn't eat, I got busy, I had salt, and that, that really tidied me over until I was fine. And also like, um, I think Patricia was saying, she was afraid she couldn't sleep. Well, I didn't sleep so good. I only slept like five hours a night and I got up a couple of times. But I wasn't tired the next day. I wasn't tired today. I wasn't tired yesterday. So I felt good. I mean, I didn't feel like I was on speed or anything, but I just felt good. And so I figured, well, now today I ate. I just had, um, I had a little bit of uh, like Maria Emmerich's protein bread and some of my homemade mayo that I make with avocado oil. And then an hour later, I had some pot roast that I had and that's all I've eaten and I'm still full and I had that at 3.30 and it's now I'm it's at it's nine o'clock here in, in Florida so anyhow I'll probably sleep pretty good tonight but like I said even without this the normal sleep I wasn't feeling like I didn't have any sleep it was really odd so but that's all so thanks all for being there I'll see you next week Okay, thanks, Jenny. Hey, Jenny, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, you've been doing this 72. What were your ketones like during the 72? Oh, well, I only checked them once at four, the 48, mar 48 uh -huh. hour mark because I don't have a meter yet. It's on order. Oh, okay. And but it was my glucose was 66 and my ketones were 4.7. So my Dr. Bosch wow. ratio was 14. Wow. So I was very pleased. Wow. I felt great. It wasn't like I was weak or anything. So very good. Um, so Wilma, would you like to share tonight? Oh, not really. Okay. But we just want to say, hey, how are you? Hi. Okay. Um, so I'd like to, uh, since it's after eight already, I'd like to open it up to anyone who might have some words of wisdom or some ideas for Tammy, because um, she is having some sleep issues and leg cramps. So first I want to talk about the leg cramps. Um, there are lots of different kinds of magnesium. Some of them work better um, for constipation. Others of them work better to help bring down blood pressure. Um, others of them work better to work on brain fog and some work better on muscular cramps and things. So let me grab something just a second. Um, this is a homeopathic. It's little pellets that you put under your tongue. I don't know if I can show these. There we go. Little teeny pellets that you put under your tongue and they dissolve. And these are magnesium phosphatase. And these are one of the best kinds of magnesium for cramps. In fact, they are advertised for muscle cramps, menstrual cramps, et cetera. Um, so um, I would suggest, I know you're taking 800 of the citrate and the citrate is best known as being easy to, on the stomach and um, ease, easing um, constipation best, but it's not best known as a muscle cramp reliever. So I'd suggest you get some of this magnesium phosphatase. I got it from Amazon and it's very inexpensive. And 
Can you spell that? Phos, whatever that word is you're saying? Yeah, phosphate. It's like phosphate. Oh, okay, um, pH. Yeah. yeah, it's pH. Magnesium phosphate, and um, it's, it's very inexpensive, and it's advertised for muscles cramps, menstrual cramps, general pain. And there's 200 little teeny tablets in here. I think it was six bucks or something or another, and you take four at a time. Um, so uh, they really haven't found magnesium toxicity until you get to about 1,500 milligrams a day. So you're at 800 with what you're taking. I might back off that a little bit when you add this and um, you know see what happens. And uh, it may take a week using, because it's a homeopathic, it's very gentle on the system, um, but it might take a little while to really kick in. So, you know, that's my only idea or suggestion. Um, do you do any um, magnesium floats or magnesium baths or anything, Tammy? No, I'm not really a bath person, although um, it's freezing. I was freezing cold today, so always makes you feel like you want to take a bath when you're cold. <laughs> What's uh -huh. the brand of your magnesium? Um, it's Highlands, H-Y-L-A-N-D, apostrophe S. Okay, thanks. Um, um, and I do have a bag of magnesium in, the, in my bathroom for my next bath, um, but I do take them once in a while, but not... Um, I maybe took one or two last year when I started with her, but I just can't bear myself really to take a bath Yeah, um, all the time. For me, um, getting out of the tub is my problem. I, I just, uh, with my girth <laughs> that it is and how slippery a tub is when it's wet, it's difficult for me to get out of a tub. Um, I like it. It's great like soaking there but then there's this fear I have of being stuck here um, and not being able to get out or falling when I'm getting out uh, mm -hmm. so I don't do soaks and we live four hours away from the nearest place to do a magnesium float I'd love to do one but four hours is a bit of a drive to do a float. So I haven't done one yet. Um, now on the sleep side of it, have you considered uh, whether you may have some form of sleep apnea? Um, I have not considered it because I really don't think I do. I don't have snoring problems. I don't have problems with I just don't have those kind of problems. My husband has a CPAP machine and I just, I just don't think I have those kind of issues. Um, um, my husband and I both have sleep apnea, but we have very different kinds of sleep apnea. And um, my mother never snored. She, she would make little sounds that just sounded like her breathing, but she also had pretty severe sleep apnea. And plenty of people with sleep issues don't think they have apnea, but they do. Um, and it can cause a lot of problems, brain fog um, and uh, heart problems, blood pressure, uh, hormonal problems and everything. And there is a list from the American Association, uh, the American Sleep Association of 25 things uh, that you should check. Um, and if you have more than, I think it's seven of them, you should be evaluated for sleep apnea. Um, the other thing I find in my practice is if people are eating a food that they are actually sensitive to, they won't be able to sleep well. It disturbs their sleep. And um, I found this in my oldest daughter. Um, she had the hardest time falling asleep and would not sleep well until we found out she was sensitive to wheat. And we took her off wheat and she started going to sleep and staying asleep well. Um, I know personally, if I eat wheat, I don't fall asleep very well. And if I eat dairy, a lot of dairy, 
I don't stay asleep well. I'll have a very restless night. Um, so you can look at your food, you can do a food diary um, where you write down your food and you write down what kind of night you had, how easily you fell asleep, how well you stayed asleep, how many times you were awake um, and things like that and see if you can correlate it to food. So that's all I have to say about sleep and magnesium. Is there anyone else with ideas about sleep or magnesium for Tammy? Um, I know that my, we just uh, came across a, uh, just a, this is a kind of on the food sensitivity thing. I hadn't really thought about it affecting sleep and stuff, but my husband did that. And I think there were some different levels. And again, it was one of those um, home ones. It's not from the, the guy that's here in Sioux Falls. It's a different company, but it was one of these that you just order and you get from home. And I think we spent maybe, might've been, uh, might've been close to a hundred dollars. I can't remember, but it tested enough different things and then it gives you like a range. Um, and the, the great thing about it is it seems like, you know, over the last several years, there's always all this talk about allergies. And it seems like it's only more recently that they really started talking about just sensitivity, you know, and of course the sensitivity can affect people, might not kill you, but it can wreak a lot of havoc if you have a sensitivity to something, you know, and which of course, then you just make a decision about how much you want to engage, you know, consume that product or that seasoning or whatever it happens to be. But anyway, that, that seemed to be a helpful thing for my husband as well. And then as far as the sleep apnea, you know, Tammy may, may very well not have Was I muted that whole time? Can you surely? When can you, you hear started me? talking about sleep apnea, you you accidentally muted yourself. Oh, oh, weird. Oh, thank you. Okay, well, I was going to say about the sleep apnea that Tammy very well may may not have it, but but it is so true that you, people always think of it as being the thing where people literally stop breathing and the. <laughs> you know, and do all this crazy stuff. And that wasn't the case for me either. Sometimes I would just make a, you know, just kind of a, a little weird sound or something. And, uh, and I did get diagnosed with sleep apnea, but I do think the interesting thing with me is I was having a lot of TM. I have had a whole since high school problems with TMJ. And it was a side thing, uh, that I had an oral CT scan. And when they were looking at that, they saw that the the opening in my epiglottis area was half the size of what it normally would be. Now, see, for me, I mean, that's not anything that's ever going to change. That's an anatomy situation. That's not fat. That's not girth. That's not, it's just what we should be eight millimeters is only four millimeters. So anyway, I, that again, it just kind of confirms um, so many I mean, reasons why a whole variety of different people have sleep apnea and all different. And I really don't like, I hate that I have it, but I'm glad that I know about it. Yeah, that's very true. And um, Amazon has a whole range of um, tests that you can get um, for allergies and sensitivities. Um, there's one from uh, Five Strands, which tests 640 items, both environmental and food. And yeah. I think it is only, let me see, $88. And it's available on Amazon. So, you know, that's something, you know, you can do for yourself, which is pretty, pretty easy. For some reason, my screen's funny. Um, I don't know what's going on here. Um, but anyway, okay. Well, um, for some reason I can't get back to the Zoom. <laughs> um, I don't know what's happened here. We can still oh, there see we you. Are. There okay. we are. Finally, I found you all. I lost you. Um, so, you know, that's something you can do. Uh, 
the test that I'd suggest is five strands and um, it you get your results within two weeks and they email them all to you and it's it's very, very easy. And that test is a hair analysis. And what it is, is it's testing the last six weeks to three months of what you've eaten and everything. And it, it's pretty cool. I use it a lot with clients. Um, and, um, but it's definitely worth the money. And um, so anyway, uh, so it's uh, 822. And I think I'm going to bring the meeting to an end unless there's other pressing issues anyone wants to talk about. I don't see any hands going up or people waving at me. So I'm going to assume we're good. And so um, thank you so much, all of you, for coming and uh, participating. And it was great hearing your stories. Wow, you all have great stories. And next week, we're going to get into um, your your. Uh, decluttering or decarbing your your kitchens and um, how you manage living with people who don't eat like you and um, going to other people's homes uh, that don't eat like you and don't understand why you're doing this crazy keto thing and stuff. So we're going to get into that next week. So just so you know, that's what we're going to be doing next week. All right, thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to end the recording at this time and I will see you all next week. Now, where's the little recording thing? Okay. <laughs>